Hey guys, I need some help. <laughs> My help isn't here. My help can't be found. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the helpers that I've had this season um, to give you a little background on that. And then I'm going to do a little bit more on growth regulators and we'll talk about, I'll show you just around the yards and stuff that we're doing. Just a quick video on a Sunday. I'm working all by myself like I was yesterday. Just remember the Bermuda lawn guide is free and walks you through the entire year. Now this was the first edition and in the fall, in the fall we'll be doing some updates because we've got some really cool new products coming out. <laughs> Uh, last week, I spent a lot of time on the phone with Andersons, with uh, Dr. Goolsby, who has a PhD in ag. I'll be talking to a bunch of really good scientists up there, product managers. And there are a couple of products that I want them to develop for you guys. I know I have two, maybe three new products that'll be out for next year, which are going to be really cool and people have been asking for. So make sure you click subscribe and don't forget, get the Bermuda Lawn Guide and we'll be doing an update on that sort of in the off season too. So here's the video. Oh man, <laughs> where's my help? <laughs> Gracious. Oh, an old guy like me can only do so much. All right, so let's explain a little bit. I'm tired, I'm sore, because I'm having to do a lot of this work myself. Day before yesterday, I came out here and scalped the lawn twice, cut it twice by myself. It's hot and tiring. Then yesterday, I had to come out, Barb's lawn needed to be cut. So I went over there and cut that whole thing with a real mower. Man, my knee is sore. I'm just, I'm tired. I've been doing a lot of work. Why? It's because uh, I've been real fortunate this year. I've got, let me just run down. Jacob actually works for me full time over at the warehouse. And then to give him some extra money, I let him come over here and I pay him to work with me in the afternoons. It really helps out because he's starting to really understand what's going on. Heidi is a college student who's back for the summer. And a lot of people don't know this. She's really smart. <laughs> she's like a 4.0 student in business college, in business school. She's really smart. But she works up at the farm with her dad and um, then comes and helps me maybe one day a week or so or two days a week and it gives her some extra money too. Jess was actually unemployed by the whole virus thing that came through and I uh, stumbled onto her and she came over and she's she's quirky she's funny but she's man she works hard she is one of the hardest workers that I actually that come and help me here. So Heidi will be going back here soon. Um, Jacob can still help me uh, Malin is actually probably not going to be helping me anymore. I don't know. She's up at the farm. She always seems to be busy. So I've been real lucky to find some really good people to help out and help them out. In return, uh, they get some money too. My son may help, but he's, he's full-time in college. But anyways, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and um, man, it's just tiring. So as an example... One of the reasons I'm putting down growth regulator and we're doing this testing is because all the thunderstorms we're having. Last night we had another one, every 24 hours. And then this morning I'm in the shower, boom, I hear nothing, we get another one. So my yard is an absolute wreck right now. I've got leaves everywhere. I'll walk you around and I'll show you some of the yard. But I got leaves, my green is covered with leaves and pine straw. The pool is full of leaves. So I've got like, you know, two hours worth of work that I gotta get done and I don't have any help. <laughs> So I guess that means I'm going to be tired again. Anyways, I want to talk a little bit too about preparing for this fall. Now, back months ago, I talked to you guys about preparing for this whole first wave of virus thing and how it was going to impact, how I thought it was going to impact supply chains, and it did. I warned everyone. I said, get what you need now, and um, it, 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 I was right. And so what we're seeing is... We haven't even seen the quote-unquote second wave yet. We're just starting to see these spikes go up, and I'm a little concerned about supply chains. So I just want to let you know what I'm doing, and if you want to follow, that's fine. What I'm doing is I'm starting to project out a few months in advance because right now things aren't that bad as far as businesses and supply chains. But just to be safe, the things that you're going to need is make sure you have enough fertilizer on hand now to carry you through the fall. That's one thing. Number two, 
um, be prepared for armyworm season. Probably towards the end of July, we're gonna to start to see armyworms and the granular double kill. And I also like to have some spray permethrin on hand. Permethrin, permethrin, however you wanna say it. Um, put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. So those are the two things I use for armyworms. The double kill actually sort of hangs out in the thatch layer and that's where they hide. They're not, they don't go in the ground, they hide out in the thatch layer. And then when it cools off, they come out on the leaves. So what I do is I put down a double kill layer and I spray with the permethrin when I know that I have them. And it's like death. I mean, there's just dead army worms everywhere. So make sure you have that on hand. Um, if you're doing humichar, if you're doing a humichar program, um, I don't think we'll really have much issue with that as far as supply goes. I don't, I think we'll be okay. But uh, like I said, I'm putting mine out at probably every single month I'm putting humichar out uh, on the lawns for my applications. That'll stop once the freeze moves in. There's really no reason to put it on, I don't think, after the growing season. Uh, your pre-emergent, I don't know that I'd order it now, but I do have it now. <laughs> I have my fall pre-emergent already stacked up. You might want to think. Now, with my pre-emergent, what I do with my Bermuda is I really don't do a whole bunch of pre-emergent until it really starts to get cold. Like my lawn's going dormant, completely dormant. That's when I put out my pre-emergent. I don't do a pre-emergent while my grass is still green. Uh, I stop doing that. I really focus on a heavy treatment in the fall, and then we'll do a heavy treatment probably in January or February, somewhere around there. Anyways, what else have we got? <clears throat> but I just want you to be prepared for that. Start to go down your checklist and make sure, do I have enough of these products to carry me through the fall? I don't have to worry about supply chains. I've got them all stored up. It's a good thing to do. Anyway, so let me just take you around. I'm gonna walk you around real quick. I'll show you my disaster backyard and then I'll show you some of the growth regulator stuff that we're testing. I'm pretty happy with the results. All right, so I'm just gonna, dogs. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna walk you around the back thunderstorm mess that's got to be cleaned up we did the scalp here i'll show you the green but then i'm going to go out and i'm going to apply to the front i'm going to apply this growth regulator and i'm going to give you some tips as far as uh, measuring a lot of times it's hard you get a bag of something and it's hard to figure out how much you can put out well i did a conversion into volume by gallons and that should really help people understand how to put this out so so as you can see i got leaves and pine needles all over the place here it's an absolute mess i mean look at the pool i gotta spend an hour cleaning just the pool <laughs> look at that <sighs> well, unless i want to cut down all these trees <laughs> that's part of my job so the green is actually looking really nice the green's looking good i probably need to cut it i'll probably wait till tomorrow i got too much to do today but you can see all the leaves all over it. Leaves and pine needles just everywhere over this thing. Okay, so I thought I'd... I came out to do my normal morning walk and I figured I'd just take you along with me. I came out myself and cut Barb's property yesterday in the heat, which was a butt kicker after scalp in the back. But... Man, her lawn really, really looks good. She was so happy. <laughs> That really looks nice. The test patch, the test patch really looks nice. So that really is looking amazing. Now what I'm watching on this was, this is more common Bermuda with the growth regulator applied. What's interesting is, look at the color difference. We didn't put PGF complete on this part and then look at the color difference. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, again, I'm not really seeing any negative impact whatsoever from the application here, and that's what was what I really wanted to see. All right, let's go back here. Now, this is the test for my lawn, the test area. <clears throat> of course, we put growth regulator back here. Now, if you remember, this was the area that was infested with poana back in here. All gone and pretty.
All right, and so we put, I did one, two, three passes here on this strip, even with that tree. And I can actually visually see a little bit of a difference. One thing I can see is I can see quite a few seed heads over here in this area. And I do not see any in this area, or very few. And then I go back to seeing a few more. So you do have a reduction in your seed heads. It's, it's so hard to tell. I want to leave this for one more week and watch it. But it really wasn't... I'm really not measuring the results of this growth wise, what I'm really measuring is, is there any damage from doing doing the application this way? And that's the key point, because I want to do this at least on my front. We're cutting way too much. I've got my spreader here. When you order this new growth regulator through the link that I show, it's gonna come with a sort of cheat sheet on applications and I'll have some of my tips and some of the people from Anderson's we put together a cheat sheet and that's what I'm doing today I really like to put it out while there's a dew on the lawn and I gotta get out there and put it out there now because there's some dew on the grass that's what I'm doing okay so one of the cheat thing cheat sheets that um, hey girl so one of the cheat things that I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna create uh, not everybody has a scale that they can weigh, so I'm going to do this by volume. One gallon, and it's six pounds. Just over six pounds. Six pounds, four ounces. And so here's how you can calculate this out. Let's say I've got 6,000 square feet out here. Two pounds per thousand square feet. That means I need 12 pounds. I need 12 pounds. That meant how many gallons? Two gallons. It's an easy way to figure out the application rate. Set your spreader. Your slot should be about an eighth of an inch, and you'll go one way and then go back the other way crisscross and you should get a good even application. Make sure you get the entire lawn. So I forgot to push record <laughs> when I went this way, I was in such a hurry. But putting this out in the dew, you can't see it from this angle, but I can see my lawn stripes and I can really calculate and really watch where I'm applying. So that's really important, I think. Again, the dew grabs it, you get a little bit of a foliar <clears throat> then it transfers down to the base of the plant and that's where that's where the transference from the chem from the product to the plant the translocation whatever you want to call it that's where it really happens at the base of the plant so now I'm gonna go crisscross It's uh, 8 a.m. and I'm already sweating my butt off. <laughs> so I've put my growth regulator down here. Again, 6,000 square feet, two gallons gives me right at um, what I need. So 6,000 square feet, that's 6,000 units. 6,000, that's six 1,000 units. Six times two pounds, it's 12. So I need 12 pounds. Six pounds in a gallon, two gallons. Make sure you get it right. Put your spreader on the tiniest spreader opening you can get where it's coming out, which is usually about an eighth of an inch, and go back and forth, and go back and forth, and then go back and forth until all that 12 pounds, or whatever it is you need, is dispersed. If you run out of a little bit towards the end, it's okay, put a little bit more on. Like I said, we've been doing testing with this, and a little bit more is not that bad. We're not harming the lawns at all. So remember, growth regulators are not for everyone. If you're struggling with your lawn and your lawn is really crappy, growth regulator is probably not for you. Growth regulators are for people that have gotten their lawn to the point that they're happy with it. And a growth regulator will basically reduce the amount of upward growth and reduce the amount of cutting that you have to do. But the problem with growth regulators is like today, I got a breeze out here. If I come out here and try and spray this stuff, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be destroying my lawn because the overspray drift of these products it's real hard to manage so that's why we're really focused on this granular product let's talk let's go back touch on this fall thing again in planning 
in the description below I'm gonna put a link and I'll do sort of a checklist for you guys I'll have all the products there and what I'm doing what I'm getting ready to order uh, we're not linking to the growth regulator yet until the final testing is done and it's all set that should maybe be next week but I'm gonna to link to all those products so that you know what you need my suggestion is is you get them ordered now <laughs> start ordering your stuff now stack it in your garage somewhere and have it anyways that's about it guys just a real quick uh, quick video about being a little prepared talk to you later doc mm -hmm.